Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark with Limo Marketer and I'm back with a new video today. I want to talk about how we target corporate clients. This is a question I used to get all the time prior to COVID. And now, as you all know, well, if you're a limo company, if you're an operator, you know, there's not as much corporate work, but it's coming back. For a long time there, it was pretty much all retail. But corporate is starting to come back and I'm getting more and more questions. How do we target corporate clients? What's the best platform to target them on? And so I uh, would like to answer that here. Uh, so first off, with regards to the platform, I'm a bit biased, but let me tell you why I think Google Ads and, and just Google search in general is the, the best platform to target um, these customers on. Um, and it's really, well, let's first look at our options. First, we have Facebook, Instagram, which those are kind of the same, right? Uh, LinkedIn, which, you know, is a, a platform you can target people on. And, uh, and then we have Google search, uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, Bing. And, and those are really the major ones, right? Uh, I'm not gonna st talk about Snapchat or TikTok uh, because I just don't think those are that great um, for operators trying to target corporate clients. It's a very niche group you're looking uh, to target. And so let's talk about really uh, the main ones. Uh, first, Facebook and Instagram. So with Facebook and Instagram and with LinkedIn and Snapchat, in any platform except for uh, a platform that does search, you are at a disadvantage because all you can do is target someone based on who they are, not what they're currently searching for, not their current intent. And that's why search, uh, even Amazon, Amazon has a lot of searches on it. Um, search is just so incredibly powerful because we can capture someone when they're actively looking for that service we offer. So that's immensely valuable. Now, that's not to say you can't make it work with Facebook and Instagram, um, but we have to remember with Facebook, Instagram, or any sort of um, you know social network where you don't have that intent, you need to be making an offer. And so a lot of people don't understand this. They create an ad on Facebook, they just boost a post, and that, that might say something like, hey, book our car service, uh, book your airport car service today. And that's not compelling, right? Because it, it might be compelling if that person is actively searching for a car service, right? But if they're not, that's not going to get anyone's attention, right? You're not giving them anything um, for their contact information. And so it just doesn't work that well without an offer. And I'm not going to go into some potential offers today, uh, but an example of one might be for a limo company that does wine tours. Maybe you say, hey, we've got this wine tour package from San Francisco to Napa. It's you know five or six hours and it's you know um, midweek special uh, for you know 497 flat or 597 flat, all, all fees included. That would be an offer. Um, because you're giving them something. You know, normal rate would be 900 or thousand dollars. That's an offer. Um, now with Google, you can still do an offer, but you don't have to because they're already searching for what it is that you offer. And that's the great thing about it. And so how do we target um, corporate clients on Google search uh, or even Microsoft Bing ads? Well, we have to think about this. What are they, what are they looking for, right? And it's pretty simple. They're looking for transportation, right? So they might be searching. They might be in LA flying to New York. Um, and, you know, uh, when we say corporate, we just mean business travelers, right? And so let's say, um, you know, the, the head of, I don't know, some law firm is going to New York to meet with a client or a partner. And, um, he has his secretary book his transportation. She goes on Google and searches, um, you know, luxury car service from JFK to Manhattan. Okay, so right there is a, a great potential keyword. Now keep in mind, that's a very long keyword, right? Uh, you know, luxury car service from JFK to Manhattan. Uh, so let's um, take 
just the essentials of that search phrase and create our keyword. Now, broad match modified is going away. I know that's a little technical for some of you watching this. Those are the keywords with the plus in front of them. Okay, so that's going away. And so they've, they've made phrase match um, much larger and now they're saying phrase match can capture much of the search uh, that, that broad match modified was. Okay, so, so what do we need in that phrase? And, and this is what I wanna teach you in this video is how to think about keyword creation, right? So luxury car service from JFK to Manhattan. What do we need in there? Okay, we need car, right? Um, could it be car rental? No, right? So it's gotta be car service. So those two things are must. Do we have to have luxury? No, probably not. Um, we could, you know, that could be another keyword, but we always wanna start with whatever we think is gonna drive the most traffic. So car ser luxury car service from JFK to Manhattan. Well, do we have to have um, to Manhattan? No, we don't. Um, we don't have to have it. So now we have luxury car service from JFK, uh, or I'm sorry, car service from JFK. And here's the keyword. Uh, let's see, am I gonna make it there? No, I should have probably started over here. So car service from, from JFK. And you don't have to capitalize, it doesn't matter. I, I do. Or actually, no, I don't capitalize any of my keywords just because uh, I'm a stickler for details, and it, it, but it doesn't matter either way. So here's a good potential keyword. What would another good keyword be? Instead of having from, we could do to, right? And so that that is really the bare essentials. Um, and you might be like, well, Mark, do you even need from JFK? No, you don't. That's the thing, you don't need from JFK. However, if you do not put a location in your keyword, Google is going to default to the location in your settings. This is huge. This is probably, if you learn anything from this video, this is the most important thing. If you have a keyword, or if you have a location in your keyword, it doesn't matter where you're targeting in your location settings. So long as you are using the setting that says people, um, in or interested in a particular location. It's the recommended setting, okay? So if you have that recommended setting turned on, then it doesn't matter at all the location you target. You could target like some five mile patch of land in Northern Russia. And if this was your keyword, your ads would still show when someone searches car service from JFK. A lot of people don't understand that. And I know it's a little confusing. And so, if we just had car service, now that is when your location targeting matters, right? And so typically what I like to do is I like to get as many keywords as possible with locations in them. And if that's driving enough traffic, I like to stick with that. And here's why. Now, many times you're gonna get people from outside your location, right? Because, you know, someone, in uh, you know Manhattan might just search car service, right? Or luxury car service. But um, typically you can get plenty of traffic just from um, those people outside your location searching for those things. And if you target people in your location and you do not have a location in your keyword, then be prepared to need thousands of negative keywords. And this is why having a Google Ads account that's ran uh, and, and, and working for an agency, a little promotion for myself here, that um, has been in the industry for five years and ran hundreds of accounts, I've just created more and more negative keywords as time goes on. It's probably the, the most valuable asset or one of the most valuable assets in my business because it allows me from the very beginning to be able to use keywords like this because I know I've got the proper negative keywords, right? And so let's say if you're a New York car service, luxury car service company, um, what, what negative keywords would you want? If you were using a keyword like this, you literally want every major city in the world as a negative keyword except 
for the cities around you. So that might be in the greater New York, New Jersey, uh, you know, area, maybe even going into Connecticut, right? Because if someone searches car service from JFK to Stanford, you don't want Stanford as a negative keyword, then your ad wouldn't show. But for those of you who don't have massive negative keyword lists, I get it. Um, if you're just starting out with Google Ads, don't use these types of keywords, okay? If you're uh, an operator that focuses on airport traffic or airport transfers, airport transportation, your best bet is to use keywords that have locations in them as much as you can because you won't need as many negative keywords because unfortunately, and I don't know, well, I do know why Google does this. They make a lot more money when they do um, because let's say, you know, you don't, um, you're a New York operator and you don't have Los Angeles as a negative keyword. And somebody, let's say, is in New York, right? Where you're targeting, your location targeting is New York, and you have this keyword in your campaign. And that person in New York searches Los Angeles car service. Now, not always, but many times, your ad will actually show up because if you don't have the negative keyword Los Angeles or Angeles or, or loss, um, your ad is going to show. There's a good chance that's gonna happen. And to this day, it still happens with my clients. It's unfortunate because um, look, there's hundreds of millions of cities in the world. I can't have all of them on a negative keyword list. But what you want to have is, you know, the top, you know, maybe 1,500 cities in the world, um, except for the cities around you as negatives. Uh, but that's how I want you to think about targeting corporate clients on, on Google Ads or even Microsoft Bing Ads is think about a phrase they would type in, a, a search query they would make, then think what are the, the necessary um, keyword or what are the necessary words in that phrase that must be in the keyword, okay? So another example might be like limo service to JFK, right? Um, is service needed in that keyword? No, not really, when you think about it, because what if they just search limo rental to JFK? Do you think they're planning on renting a limo and driving themselves? Of course not, right? So that's why these things, um, there's these little nuances you pick up when you've, when you've run hundreds of these campaigns and, and you see little things like that. Um, so really, you know, you could have a keyword limo uh, to JFK, your keyword could even be just limo JFK um, with the quotes around it. Um, and so anyways, that's how you target corporate clients. Now, many of you might be saying, well, Mark, uh, there's plenty of retail travelers that are going to be searching the same thing. And my answer to that is, you're right. That's just the ball game. And that, that's just how it goes. And unfortunately, you can't just target corporate clients. I wish you could. If I crack that code, uh, I'd, I'd probably have everyone as a client because that's what everyone wants, right? They want corporate clients because there's a much higher chance there's gonna be repeat business there. They're typically not spending their own money, so they're not as concerned about price. And um, so anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, let me know in the comments if this helped out. And also in the comments, if you got it this far, thank you for watching, let me know what are your questions? What would you like me to make a video about next? And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you next time.